Hello everyone, very welcome back um, with listening new story. Today it's time for another classic from this book. Um, I'm reading you, um, for, I think this is the third day and today we are reading Little Red Riding Hood. But first of all, like every evening, I would like to introduce myself for those ones who are with us for the first time. My name is Maya, I'm a writer, I love meditation, I love fairy tales, I love children, I love um, everything, <laughs> writing and reading books and I create very special audio meditative fairy tales which um, I created with a um, purpose of um, serve to the children and of course to the, um, to the adults as well because children can learn how to deep breathe, how to release the daily stress, how to prepare for new days. Parents are a good sample if you um, listen these stories with your children and also you can do something for yourself and you can support your children if um, they um, tell um, their issues loudly. So this is shortly uh, about um, Flower Fairy Flora Fairy Tales and now it's time for um, one classic story, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, enjoy listening. There was once a little girl who lived with her parents in a cottage on the edge of a large forest. Her father was a woodcutter and each morning he would go deep into the forest where he worked hard all day long chopping down trees. For her birthday one year, the little girl's grandmother made her a red cloak with a hood to match. The little girl wore her beautiful cloak every time she went outside and that is why she became known as a, red, a little red riding hood. One day, little red riding hood was playing in the garden. She heard her mother calling from the cottage. Your grandmother is not very well and she has decided to stay in bed today. Perhaps you could take her something to cheer her up. So together they packed a basket. They put in a freshly baked loaf of bread, some butter and a jar of strawberry jam. Then Little Red Riding Hood laid in a clean cloth on top of the basket and she was ready to go to her grandmother's house. Oh. I'm done. <laughs> now little Red Riding Hood's grandmother lived on the other side of the forest. So before she set off, her mother made the little girl promise never to stay from the path and never to talk to strangers. Little Red Riding Hood listened carefully. Then off she went dressed in her special cloak. Go straight to grandmother's house and remember to keep to the path. Her mother called as she watched her disappear into the forest. Red Riding Hood was halfway to her grandmother's house when a big grey wolf stepped out from behind the tree. Good morning, my dear. What a simply lovely red cloak you have on, said the wolf, doing his best to look friendly. When little Red Riding Hood heard this, she forgot what her mother had told her and she began to talk to the wolf. My grandmother made it for my birthday, said the little girl politely. She's ill in bed now and I'm going to cheer her up. How very kind, my dear, smiled the wolf, trying not to show his sharp teeth. And what have you got in your basket for grandmother? The wolf asked Little Red Riding Hood. Freshly baked bread, golden 
butter and her favorite strawberry jam, she replied. How simply delicious, said the wolf, licking his lips. Can you believe that at that very moment the wicked wolf was planning to gobble up Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother too, if he had half a chance. Where does your grandmother live? asked the wicked wolf. Right at the end of his path, on the, on the far side of the forest, said Little Red Riding Hood as she walked along. Why not take some of these beautiful flowers to your grandmother, suggested the wolf for he was trying to delay Little Red Riding Hood as long as he could. When the Little Red Riding Hood saw the flowers growing by the path, she stopped at once and began to pick them. Red Riding Hood was so busy she never noticed the wolf bound off the path towards the grandmother's house. Perhaps the wolf knew a short cut through the trees, for in less time than it takes to tell, he was knocking on grandmother's door. Who is it? called the old lady from her bed. It's little Red Riding Hood, whispered the wolf as softly as he could. Just lift up, lift up the latch and walk right in, said the grandmother. The big grey wolf rushed through the door, bounded into the bedroom and leaped onto grandmother's bed. When the poor old lady heard the wolf snarl and snow his sharp, pointed feet, she threw back the bedclothes, jumped out of bed, ran outside and hid behind the woodshed. Meanwhile, the wolf put on one grandmother's spare nightdress and one of her frilly nightcaps. He even found a spare pair of glasses on a table by the bed. I feel these glasses suit me very well. I really do look like a grandmother. And the wolf smiled as he admired himself in the mirror. When Little Red Riding Hood arrives, I shall gobble her up and I'll eat her grandmother later. And the wolf sniggered and snapped his teeth loudly. Then he jumped into grandmother's bed and pulled the bedclothes up to his chin. Before very long, Little Red Riding Hood came skipping up the path and knocked gently on her grandmother's door. Who is there? croaked the wolf, trying his best to sound like the old lady. It's Little Red Riding Hood come to cheer you up, the little girl replied. How strange grandmother sounds. Perhaps she has a sore throat. Little Red Riding Hood thought to herself. How are you feeling today? The little girl asked as she tipped up across her grandmother's room. But when the little girl put down her basket and flowers, she jumped back in surprise. Just leave the latch and walk right in, said the wolf. Why, grandmother, what big ears you have, she cried. Oh, the better to hear you with, said the wolf in a deep voice. Come closer, my dear. So little Red Riding Hood stepped a little closer to her grandmother's bed. Why, grandmother, what big eyes you have, said the little girl staring at the wolf in her grandmother's silver glasses. All the better to see you with, grinned the wolf. Come closer, my dear. So Little Red Riding Hood took one more step forward and looked very carefully at the wolf in her grandmother's nightdress and frilly nightcap. Why, grandmother, what big feet you have, gasped Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you with, snarled the wolf as he leaped out of bed. You're not my grandmother, yelled Little Red Riding Hood. Indeed I'm not, growled the wolf. I'm the big bad wolf and I'm going to gobble you up. 
When she heard that, Little Red Riding Hood ran out of the room screaming at the top of her voice, with the wall close behind her. As she rushed out of the front door, she fell right into the arms of her father, the woodcutter. He had been chopping down trees nearby along with some of the other woodsmen. When he heard Little Red Riding Hood screams and saw Grandmother peeping from behind the woodshed, he guessed that something was wrong. The wolf is going to gobble me up, shrieked the little girl. Look, he's right behind me! When the woodcutter saw the wolf running out of the Grandmother's front door, he grabbed his sharp axe. When the wolf saw the woodcutter, he trembled with fright and ran for his life. That wicked wolf must have gobbled up poor grandmother, sobbed Little Red Riding Hood. No, he hasn't, smiled the little girl fa girl's father. There she is. She's been hiding behind the woodshed all the time. How happy everyone felt. Grandmother was safe and feeling much better and feeling much better in spite of her fright. Little Red Riding Hood was safe too, thanks to her brave father. The wicked wolf was gone forever and would never return, return while the woodcutters were in the forest. It was getting late, so the woodcutters headed for home. No doubt they would there tell their children that night how they had chased a big bad wolf. He was dressed in nightdress and frilly nightcap. And that's the end of today's story. Well, the Red Riding Hood is... Um, Little Red Riding Hood is a nice story about... Um, how is not good to be forgetful? Little Red Riding Hood forget that her mother said to her that she's not allowed to talk with strangers. And she told um, the wolf where um, is her grandmother and what is her plan. And this um, wolf, bad wolf, suggested her... Um, to, to pick up some flowers that he bought some time that he was able to go to the grandmother's house. Uh, well, at the end, story ends up happily. That's great. But sometimes in the real life, it's possible that um, the end is not happy. So be careful. Don't be forgetful. Um, and listen to your parents what they are saying to you. So this is it for tonight. I would just like to invite you to check the link uh, up or down. Um, I don't know where you watch this and you will be um, able to read and uh, read more about a very special flower fairy, uh, Flora's fairy tales. Um, which I mentioned at the beginning. These are very special audio meditative fairy tales. Um, you can subscribe if you watch this on YouTube. You can follow this page um, or you can um, just write some comment if you like this story today. Um, enjoy your evening and see you soon. Good night. Mwah.